Okay, so um, welcome back again, everybody. So we're going to be um, looking a bit more at acrylics uh, today. Um, as you remember, I was doing a little bit of acrylic painting last week from a view through a window, and then I was painting a piece of architecture as well. Um, but most of you would have been doing the uh, ink and pen or the pen that runs when you add water to it. So if you've not yet finished doing that, please spend the time working on it, because um, as we've just seen from and some some of these looking fantastic. And it was nice to see a few of those posted on Facebook as well. So if you get to the end and you finish off what you're doing, please put it up there on the internet internet on Facebook. So I'm going to show you a few things that we're doing and then talk briefly about what we're doing next. Don't forget that next week um, is half term at school. So um, we won't be here next week. Um, then Thursday and Friday is a bank holiday. Obviously, we don't see each other then, but it's not Monday next week is not uh, a bank holiday. Somebody uh, tried to tell me. <laughs> uh, so um, we'll be back next the following Monday on the 6th of June. Uh, for our next uh, class and things. So I'm going to go over to the wall. So over here we have got uh, what we've been doing so far and you'll all remember um, all of this. So I had, um, I've done obviously this with the pen and the uh, water. Okay, don't forget you can use some candle wax on there or clear wax crayons on there to um, mask some areas so that when you do do an ink wash you can still see through um, to the white of the paper and and indeed somebody suggested you could draw on it first in biro put the candle wax over the top and then do your ink wash over the top of that as well so um, there's lots of things to play around with there and over here we had the plant one that i also showed you that i did sort of outside of lessons there um, and the nice thing about the those inks of course as you probably realized is that you can use uh, that you get these lovely pinks coming through as well but you can also use uh, a little bit of bleach or um, sanitizing fluid also works uh, really well um, on on the ink as well so you can remove areas of ink uh, that you've done a wash on and put more marks in using um, bleach. Somebody did do that actually at um, the Rawns class and found that things went blue. So it added another colour. You can see it's a bit of blue on the top of there. Um, but I think she'd watered down the bleach. So it didn't, uh, it wasn't as strong, of course. And then she got the blue instead of it completely disappearing. So if you do try bleach, uh, you can use varying uh, strengths of it, um, but it will um, have a different effect. So it'll have it either go blue if it's weak or it'll disappear completely if you use um, the pure bleach as well. Okay, so. Um, what we're going to do next, um, and I haven't actually got this on this screen, but um, the next thing for everybody in class is to start working on um, a building. And I did, I put the the buildings in the post on the website last week. Um, and I'll show you what I mean by those in a few minutes. These aren't them. This is just what we're going to be doing um, after the break. Uh, so we're going to look at some artists and how they interpret the theme that we've been looking at so far, which is views out of windows and then things in pots. Um, although the middle one here, you can see um, there there's um, apples on the floor, which I, th I just thought was a really nice photo. So I'll put it in anyway. But um, the one over there on the left, I really love the deep contrast and the, the, sh the, sh the colour of the shadows and things. Um, the piece that I'm working on um, is the blue window one just over here. So I'm currently painting this one. And the difference between what I was doing last week and this week is that I've covered the whole sheet of paper with a wash of blue to begin with um, after I'd drawn it out. 
and then uh, I started to build over the top. The nice thing being is you can add the highlights and they'll show up really well and you'll see what I mean in just a few minutes. And then you can add and build in the shadows and bring in some of the other colors. So I'm gonna show you that now. I'll just put that down over there for a minute. So the first part of the process for, for doing this um, piece um, was obviously to um, draw it out. So here is the picture that I, I did this one this morning. So um, now what I did, um, now I did this freehand, but I drew it out really, really loosely and freely to begin with, um, just so that I could get the basic idea of the shapes. And then um, I did this standing up because you can get a really good overview of something if you're standing up sometimes. Um, if you don't want to stand up, you can use a board or tilt your sketchbook over so you can see straight in front of you. But I find it quite nice to work uh, loosely and things. Um, and then um, I sat down and went into the details a bit more, which is what you can see here now. All right, so I'll just put that one down. And then the next stage, as I said, was to put some blue over the top and then start adding in the highlights so there is some of the darker shadows in there because I, I didn't photograph it as quickly enough but you can see um, if we look if we compare it with the original here uh, my blue is different again but um, I do love this blue that I'm using uh, so a wash of blue thin thin color over the top that means adding lots of you know not lots of water but enough water to make it transparent and use a flat brush over the top of the whole of your drawing and then once that's dry enough which will be quite quick because acrylic does dry really quick is to add um, use white and a touch of blue uh, to bring out some of the highlighted areas where the light is coming through the window there so that's what I've done there and then I started to apply uh, the shadows. So let me just um, grab that one next and then we'll have a look at what I've done so far. And I'll talk a bit about what um, I was hoping you'd do today too. So uh, I think I've hidden it now, there it is. So there's the um, original and here is the one that I've been doing um, today. So now you can see the difference here is that I've started to add much more shadows and worked into the window frame and I've also added some pinks into the flowers which I'm going to work back into with the green stems and so forth. Um, so it's, it's really nice to have this blue background to begin with because it means that you can you can see the shadows you can see the highlights on that blue background and you can get the effect quite quickly, which is the same in the case of the uh, lovely flowers that are on there as well. So I'm going to be working into that one a little bit more um, today. Um, but I'll just show you and remind you what we were looking at last week. Um, so this is this this work is for um, after we get back. But, um, you know, there's I'm not stopping you, of course, if you want to get started with something like this straight away. So I'll go over to um, the desk. So this is the one that I did. I did do this one last week um, and it was really nice to to uh, create some different marks and build up layers of color on top of each other. Um, so again, I painted this quite loosely, um, but I'm just focusing mainly on the effect of the light and the shadows on here because if I paint those light areas and dark areas um, then I'm pretty you know I'm, I'm pretty much going to get this um, lovely effect of the light coming through the window and then um, so I used a flat brush to do the frame but when it came to the foliage in the garden just down here I then uh, used a smaller brush and very small stipples or dabs a little bit like um, perhaps Picasso might have done or not Picasso uh, Van Gogh might have done when he was working on his landscapes and so forth so we've got um, a little bit of an impressionist style going on um, with some of these marks on here 
Okay, so this is the one that I wanted to talk to you about. So on the website, I've got this picture here and um, in the folder from last week. And then um, there's a load more that are kind of very simplistic, very almost minimalist. But the nice idea here is that you've got these lovely flat areas of colour that you can then, once you start looking at it a lot closer, you'll see that there's other areas or subtle areas of tone that you can uh, work into as well. So on the one that I was working on last week, I did begin to add in some glazes of colour back over the top. So I'm going to use a bit of burnt umber. Nearly dipped my brush in my tea. <laughs> So a little bit of burnt umber on top of this orange and you can add some extra tone but a bit more subtly in places over the top. So just doing this a little bit randomly really but it's it's kind of a little bit of a wash. Let's get in, have a look. So this is really watered down paint that goes over the top and it means that you can see some of the colours beneath. And you can spread it out very easily while it's still wet. So you can add this variation of colour in there. Um, the other thing which you will have seen me do before is to use this. Uh, on this Adobe building there's a little bit of um, sort of a grainy texture on there. So as you know I'm quite keen on doing this is to add some paint onto a toothbrush and then use your finger to flick it and you can add a little bit of texture into the into the sort of uh, stone well it's not stonework is it's adobe adobe work on there well i'm calling it adobe anyway okay um now with the the reason i chose this picture and i'm sure i said this in the video last week is that you, the colours in the sky and in the um, doorways and the pots, all the colours are very, very much the same. So it makes for a really interesting composition and piece. There is another version of this photograph um, on the website uh, in the folder there that is the same picture almost, but from a bit further away and without the pots. On it but the reason I chose this one is because it's got the plants on it which adds a little bit of a variation in texture so again I've used my brush very small brush to um, stipple just to dab the colors into those areas to create this sense of the plant itself somebody did something really nice today which was to once they had done this is to then draw back into it with a pen to then add some extra finer marks over the top which you know if you if you like using line and pen in the way that we've been using during the course so far you might want to try that over the top as well okay so um so look for on in the folder the pictures that look very much like this and you'll have what we're after. But if you know if you want to do something a little bit different to that and you feel like you could handle, you know, playing around with um, playing around with something that's a bit more complex, perhaps because you've been playing with acrylics for a bit like um, quite a few of you have in the class, then please go ahead and do that. So with this, um, I did show everybody a little bit of a blend earlier. So I'm going to do that again today. Um, so you need to get your first colour when you're doing a blend. And the thing to remember about acrylics is that they will dry really quickly. You know, so make sure you're adding some water onto your brush and into your paint. Get your second colour mix a little bit of paint next to it over here and then work a little bit further away and go in the same direction and eventually those two colors will blend really nicely 
so you end up with a blend I could blend that a little bit further but um so it's it's getting the two colors that you want or the two variations I've got a tint of um of this uh purple color next to um more of a pure color there and there's nothing to stop you layering and doing more layers on top of that afterwards okay so that's um that's the technique that I was trying to get across with looking at um, these types of uh, buildings whereas this one is an artist painting that I'm working from here and this is just really to get you to have a look at how other artists have interpreted um, the techniques or, or the subject that we're looking at so at the moment I've been just working on these flowers around here and the window frame I've done a little bit on the sky just over here at the top as well so um, we'll be working on that um, next half term um, sorry next half term after the school holidays um, but I'll, I'll record this today obviously and you can you can watch um, you can watch me painting it again if you want to um, <clears throat> okay so that's the plan for today I hope you've all managed to find a picture that you want to do there are some really nice ones on there um, the simplistic ones that you can work from um, but if you want to if you can't wait to get into the artist then please uh, go ahead or choose a different photo to what I've suggested So I continued to work on this picture during the rest of the lesson and um, basically there's a lot of layering uh, in the whole of the picture during this um, during this piece of work. Uh, again, like last time, I was working nice and loosely with the colour. Uh, the interesting thing about, um, about this again, or one interesting thing about this, uh, was you can see just here actually in this this um, this clip that um, the print that I had were the colors are very different uh, compared to the uh, one that we've got on screen here so um, and that was quite an interesting challenge um, looking at both of those pictures at the same time uh, to balance out what I thought was going to look nice um, so just here this was this was nice looking at those uh, transparent or um, I suppose they're net curtains is what we would call them um, so over the top of the blue shadows in the curtains there I applied some thin uh, lines or thin washes or lines of white over the top so you've got the transparency of the white creating the effect of the pattern on the net curtains themselves um, and I did the, exactly the same sort of thing over on uh, the left hand side just here as well. So you can see me doing it here. The colour itself is um, a watered down titanium white, which I put straight over the top of the um, blue that I've added in there for a shadow. So then, of course, we start to get this effect of the light. Uh, being cast through the, those curtains just there uh, and then I, I decided I needed to add a bit more tone back over the top so you can see me just doing that there um, so I spent a little bit of time working on on those curtains and indeed I popped back a couple of, a couple more times a bit later on but the nice thing with these acrylics is that you know you can put a color down and it'll dry quickly and then you can work back over the top of it um, I noticed on this left hand curtain that it was a little bit um, lighter perhaps because the curtain had turned slightly so the light hit it a bit more um, towards the inside of the window there with that left hand curtain so just where I was brushing just now. So I worked back over that area to lighten that up and give it the effect of the light coming um, through there as well. 
Uh, one of the nice things about um, that I noticed about the picture as well is you've got that really nice dark foliage which is in shadow at the top of the window which adds a bit of contrast and then the um, the open window which comes just in front of the plant or the flowers is a little bit darker and, and the colours are a bit more vivid and say the neck curtains and, and so forth. Um, as I said, you can see the photograph there on the left hand side of the screen, how much paler it is compared to the real picture. Um, and I actually, um, I mentioned this whilst painting that I quite like the, the pale version over on the left. Um, not to say I didn't like the one on the other side as well. I think if I'd been working from that, I might have um, perhaps used the colour slightly differently, but um, still. I liked I liked both versions, so I've done a little bit of a mixture between the two there. I've had a lot of fun doing it. There we go. Um, I mixed some of the blue that I had with a little bit of hooker's green in there to create this nice dark um, colour for the stems. And uh, as you can see, little dashes and things in there where the flowers have come in front. And I think I go back in in a few minutes. Um, with that uh, pink and white there we go brighten that up a little bit um, I probably would have gone back and done a little bit more on on those um, but they, they look pretty good they're all right and then um, having done most of that I then start to uh, work into the backgrounds with those sort of um, warmer browns in the field towards the back there and some of the greens a bit further down there we go so some of these warm ones in there quite bright at the moment but then I, I think I'll work back into it a little bit more to tone those colors down slightly as well it's got a beautiful sort of rich color to it there we go so just at the back there of that field we've got this kind of greeny blue sort of color in the back of the fields there as well so and and the nice thing about that um, color is that it adds a little bit of contrast between all those lovely blues that we've been looking at seem to have slowed down a little bit there there we go and there was one uh, little thing that I didn't quite get to do and that was these there's a sculpture towards the back just under behind that porch area in the background there which I didn't quite get to well, I did, but I didn't um, spend as long on it as I would, would have liked. But um, still, quite happy with the results. An interesting picture to look at once more. Um, it's been quite interesting um, looking at the effects of the light. Quite nice how this, I think there's a pillow just there, and it's quite nice how the shadow... Um, is cast over the pillow and through the window and it's lighter on the right hand side of the pillow in the foreground there. 